today's session um, will take us behind the scenes of the contact tracing app developed in Japan this year. Um, we have Haoseki, Mariko Nishimura, and yep. Hikaru Kusaka uh, today with us. Mm -hmm. um, Haoseki is a founder of Code for Japan, one of the country's biggest civic tech communities, um, a geolocation service developer since 2002. Hal has been actively promoting the civic tech movement since managing Sinsai.info, a cloud sourcing platform that collected crisis information after the Great East Japan earthquake. Um, and then we also have Mariko Nishimura, yeah. um, who started a career in IT with IBM Japan um, before moving into marketing management at Adobe Systems and production at Bascule. CEO and co-founder of creative marketing agency Heartcatch Incorporated since 2014, Mariko connects business, creativity, and technology beyond borders, working with startups, companies, and government. Um, and then we have Hikaru Kusaka, who is a blockchain expert in both the public and private sectors. He founded the startup Blockhive in 2017 and is an advisor on the Estcoin project initiated by the Estonian government. Um, in addition, Hikaru is a digital advisor for Kaga City, which is in the Ishikawa prefecture, um, and a lecturer at University of Tokyo. I'll let you take it away. Thank you for introduce introducing us. So uh, hello from Japan. Thank you for uh, everyone. Thank you for joining this session. Uh, from Japan, we'd like to share the story about the, uh, the COVID-19 uh, and civic tech. Mm -hmm. And also we are focusing to, we will we are focusing to the uh, contact tracing app and, and we will know what's happening in Japan. So, and we, uh, we will, uh, I, we have, we, oh, sorry, the, we will start from uh, uh, what's happening in Japan right now about in, in terms of uh, COVID-19. Mm -hmm. And also we will share about the uh, Code for Japan uh, quick history and, and, and project. Uh, and also uh, uh, after that, we will talk about the contact tracing app. Before that, maybe we, we can uh, uh, may, uh, maybe uh, everyone can just say hello to everyone. Uh, uh, Hikaru, can you say hello to? Uh, Hi, everyone. Hello. This is Hikaru. Yay. <laughs> Yay. Mariko san. Hello. Hello, this is Mariko. Nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. so let's move on to the agenda. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think already we I uh, explained. Uh, at first, Mariko will uh, introduce the overview of COVID-19 in Japan. Yeah. Okay. So uh, from now on, I will introduce uh, what's going on in Japan. Maybe everybody very curious about this. But uh, first of all, uh, please using the you know chat a uh, chat comment if you need to know more or you you need you you have some uh, a question. So we will be uh, following up your questions. So, um, uh, Hikaru, mm. uh, I, will, um, you, uh, I will navigating the slide. So, uh, okay. You know, okay, I'm the owner Great. of the slide, okay? <laughs> Great. Right, so uh, we will be uh, introducing the, um, uh, our uh, Japanese uh, Code for Japan's uh, contact tracing app. It's called um, Mamori I Japan. So, in this session, you can hear a lot of this term, mamoriai. Mamoriai means protecting, protecting each other in Japanese. Uh, sadly to say, uh, this contact tracing app is not adopted officially, but uh, we will share what we learned, what, what kind of application we will um, develop. And this you know, icon is so you know, cute, right? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, actually, everybody can see that. I'm wearing this t-shirt, Mamori I t-shirt. And if you want to get this t-shirt, please you know, leave your comment. <laughs> well, so um, 
quickly, I will introducing the overview of um, Japanese situation of COVID-19. Um, so uh, Japanese, uh, the people is um, yeah, commonality um, and also the Jap government action, uh, especially for the March and May. So maybe you know, but Japanese people like to keep clean. So uh, we are very used to uh, washing hands and so uh, wearing the mask. And they, you know, some people take a bath twice a day, like my husband. So we really, you know, uh, uh, used to uh, keep ourselves clean. So um, of course, COVID-19 is very, you know, we've, uh, we are afraid of uh, the COVID-19, but uh, this kind of the new rule is not so, you know, uh, hard to take uh, for the Japanese people. And, uh, uh, and also um, not like other countries, we, we do not have, uh, we do not have a like kind of a lockdown. So, but uh, this kind of the posters, like wash your hands, and also the stay home is provided but from the government or uh, Tokyo metropolitan city. Then we will put we will put this kind of poster inside of, in my house and also just you know keep stay home. So uh, it seems uh, we could conquer COVID nineteen at this you know moment. Of course, that a lot of patient there and a lot of you know uh, fear is uh, around the you know news media. But uh, just keeping the mask and also washing hands and stay home, we, we did it. But sadly to say, uh, maybe same as the other country, we lose our attention and tired of you know staying home. So infection number uh, increasing. And sadly to say, um, especially for the in last week in Tokyo, the worst number was you know there. So uh, in, uh, the infection number is you know worse and worse and worse. And also um, like this a uh, graph, um, the younger uh, younger people is more common that uh, you uh, infected uh, rather than the uh, senior person. So this this kind of you know to stay home and the wearing mask is, is very hard to you know younger people it is not only for the japanese i understand the pe younger people do love the party and the meeting the friends <laughs> but but you know this is kind of the you know our problem same as other country and other story and other story about the, um uh, taking care of the data uh, Japanese uh, people, uh, traditionally, uh, many Japanese are extremely afraid of leakage of personal data. So a lot of people just keeping their data uh, uh, as, as their own in their methods. But um, to see other countries' uh, situation, our fear of leakage of personal data is slowly changing. Data can protect ourselves. And also, public opinion has begun to say, you know, that data, data disclosure can, you know, kind of a very uh, strong way to protecting ourselves from like COVID-19 virus. And now we have officially, uh, we have a contact tracing app in Japan. It's called the COCOA. And uh, it's launched on June 19th. It's it already downloaded uh, 9.41 million uh, last week, but uh, as I said, this is quite a good number. But um, you know, younger people is infected, and also uh, younger people uh, do not have you know, do not installing this kind of app. So we need to uh, solve this you know gap. Younger people should have more this kind of application. So that's the kind of things that we need to uh, try from now on. And um, yeah, so quick summary of Japanese situation for COVID-19. The infection number is increasing, especially for younger generation. And Japanese offshore contact tracing app, COCOA is debut, but not so uh, much penetration for younger generation. The way Japanese treat personal data may be changing. Before, strictly protection, but right to share. So this kind of situation is now around Japan. So here, uh, please welcome the Haruseki, so the uh, Code for Japan's uh, representation. Um, and he, he's introducing what's, 
what is called for Japan, what kind of the activity he doing, uh, they doing for the COVID-19. Yay! <laughs> thank you, thank you. So could you share the yeah. next page? So yeah, uh, as a code for Japan, uh, we have been uh, uh, running many projects for uh, for the uh, for the COVID nineteen. Mm -hmm. So I think, uh, yeah, the code for Japan's uh, tagline is uh, "Think together and create together." So we are just. Uh, we started uh, this uh, community uh, since 2013. Uh, please go to the next slide. And, and we have uh, around uh, 18 brigades in Japan. So those of communities are very uh, diverse. And uh, as like uh, other countries uh, community, we are uh, that each Communities are uh, uh, independently working, and 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 for this uh, COVID nineteen situation, they also uh, have been running various projects for uh, uh, various projects. And and can you go next? And and like this, the each brigade have uh, original logo and identity. Uh, Code for Japan itself is just a network and uh, and, and have uh, uh, and connect to the uh, each community connect and actually i started this kind of uh, civic tech activity uh, since uh, 2011 it was the uh, year that big a huge earthquake occurred in Japan, and I started the, the, uh, this uh, this uh, uh, crowdsourcing platform uh, called Sinsai.info, and and collect the uh, and to collect the uh, what is happening in Japan and mapping the this information to the, to the uh, Japanese uh, map. So yeah, in like this case, uh, if in, in emergency situation, the many people are, have, have uh, a strong motivation uh, to solve the problem. Uh, and also uh, this, uh, and this time, uh, many people uh, have been running many projects. Can you go next? Like this. And the, uh, I, not only uh, the contact tracing app, uh, we have many projects uh, like uh, dashboard applications or idea gathering or uh, making search engines or uh, making a line bot to help uh, lo uh, local NPOs. Uh, I, I just introduced just one case and go next. Uh, is uh, uh, Tokyo Metropolitan Government site uh, and kind of dashboard. Uh, what's happening uh, happening in Japan, in Tokyo, and and Code for Japan created this website for uh, Tokyo Metropolitan Government and make it uh, open source, and and this web page is uh, very uh, become very popular because uh, it is uh, not not like uh, ordinary uh, government website. You can see the uh, graph and chart uh, nicely and also uh, providing uh, uh, various languages. And, and next, please. And uh, we make, make the source code open source and in the GitHub. And many people uh, help us. Please go to the next slide. Uh, thank you. For for everyone to contribute to contribute the uh, this Git GitHub in in just three weeks we've mm -hmm. got uh, uh, seven hundred fifty issues and uh, more than six six hundred issues were closed by the uh, more than two hundred contributors uh, in total as total the more than three hundred contributors uh, help. Uh, uh, contributed to our website. Please go next. 
and including the Audrey Tan, the wow. uh, digital government minister, the digital minister of the Taiwan. Mm -hmm. And like this, uh, the contributors were com coming uh, from the uh, uh, worldwide. Next, please. Wow. And also, uh, other local government uh, used this uh, open source and created the uh, original version on, on the, their cities. And many uh, civic tech communities uh, cloned our source code and, and, and created the, their own version, and including the government itself. Local government itself uh, cloned the, our website and provide the uh, uh, the dashboard for the each city's citizen. Next, next please. Yeah, I I realized uh, this uh, is really important uh, uh, value of open source investing the uh, investing into the uh, open source technology is uh, kind of uh, creating the uh, intellectual capital. So that uh, everyone can join and create something and learn something from that. Mm. Next, please. Uh, for example, a um, lot of documents have been published by the uh, many uh, contributors, including mm. the uh, high school student and, and mm. junior high school students. Mm. And center article is the. Uh, uh, written by the uh, high school student and it, it is explaining the how to contribute to uh, the Tokyo Metropolitan uh, Government website mm -hmm. and this article was really uh, great for the people who want to uh, contribute to uh, open source software generally as well and this kind of article was uh, were, uh, created by uh, the students mm -hmm. next please Yeah, and also uh, we uh, have uh, uh, that the one of the students uh, came up with the idea to help the uh, students uh, who, ha who, who have, have to uh, stay home and that the student uh, couldn't uh, have an uh, opportunity to, to go to get the uh, intern, internship to the uh, uh, the companies. So we created this challenge project, uh, challenge cup uh, kind of uh, programming contest uh, uh, to help the, such uh, students uh, to, uh, and instead of going to the uh, internship to the companies, uh, we create something and, and appeal, appeal to the, uh, the companies. Next, please. Yeah. Uh, that is uh, uh, from the code for Japan's activities. So next would be uh, Hikaru, Hikaru will uh, explain about the contact tracing app. And, uh, and uh, just, uh, sorry, uh, and, and let's have a discussion. Uh, please uh, uh, write a comment if you have something to ask. Okay, Hikaru, please. Okay, thank you. Hi everyone, this is Hikaru uh, from Blockhype and also I'm uh, joining partially as a Code of War Japan member right now. Um, from my part, I'm gonna talk about, you know, I'm happy to share uh, what we have done behind this Memoria Japan project and also what we have learned uh, from this as we couldn't actually deliver this app uh, for Japanese citizens. Uh, so can you go to the next slide, please? Yeah, so as Mariko said that uh, our project is so-called Mamoria Japan, which is uh, which means that they're protecting each other, a project mm -hmm. together. And uh, the first of all, I would like to share uh, why we actually started this project uh, in, actually in this March. Mm -hmm. uh, can you go to the next slide? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so the first of all, I would like to share why we start this project. And uh, I think there are like, at the time, uh, which like uh, back in the day, it's, it was about March and there's already so many projects related to contact tracing app all over the world. 
at yeah. least as far as we understood, there are uh, more than 20 projects uh, so far working in the world. And uh, as same as like uh, the contact tracing uh, app project in other nation, uh, we also had a like, similar target and goal. Uh, there mm -hmm. are like four points. The one thing is to reduce the burdens of healthcare workers and provide them useful information to prevent the pandemic. Because like the, like the, the people uh, in healthcare uh, industry, they are really suffered by, you know, the things that, that so many things to do. Mostly in Japan, the, all, all of the, those like uh, the, the uh, operations are done in, you know, paper. So they, yeah. they, don't, they, don't, they, don't have, they don't have internet access or they don't have spreadsheet even, or they, don't, they have nothing with digital. So they, they, they need to use, you know, the fax mm -hmm. to send it over the information of patient to, to you know, like a government. Wow. So that was really nightmare for them. Nightmare. So that's why we realized that we need something to help people mm -hmm. in healthcare workers to make them, you know, much make, you know, better to work, to help patients. Yep. And other thing is about to prevent the spread of COVID-19 and save as many lives as possible. Mm -hmm. Because in Japan, I think it's same as also in the US or other region, but we have so many elderly people, which like originally said that they have more risk to get a, you know, the, uh, the heavier COVID-19 positive, uh, like, you know, symptom. Yeah. So in that sense, like we need to prevent the spread of uh, COVID-19 virus, but mm -hmm. like, uh, Unfortunately, comparing to the earthquake, it's pretty hard to see uh, how impactful it is. Right. So that's why we need. We thought that it's uh, we need something to make it visualize, mm -hmm. same as you know the COVID nineteen statistic. Yeah. And and like I said, like uh, there are so many uh, countries uh, or Gavitech team, like mostly in Singapore, Civictech engineers in other nations already started to build a contact tracing app. So in that sense, like uh, Japan is all like almost like one man's al already behind mm -hmm. uh, in terms of pro production of uh, contact tracing app on uh, in the end of March. Yeah. But, and uh, and also like the another reason is like we as Japanese had no clue how we should behave against COVID nineteen in daily lives at the time. So like uh, we 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 spend like regular life uh, at least at the end of March. Uh, and we just simply, you know, take a, like a train and like, there's so many people pretty packed with the train and mm. there's so many risks that we can get COVID-19 virus easily comparing to the, you know, mm. the other countries. Yeah. Mm. But at the same time, since, like I said, it's invisible, the COVID-19 risk is invisible. Like uh, people are just simply like, you know, having a fear of losing daily lives, but like I have no clue because it's invisible. And uh, the, the uh, biggest reason why we are started this project is simply we are inspired by the concept of the Tracing Together app because it's not about, the, they, they didn't talk about the technology, but they talk about like uh, the people. They talk about the, the people protecting each other. Mm -hmm. So it is about protecting like the ones you love, the protecting like uh, your family, protecting your friends. Yep. If you protect your friends, then like uh, you can save your friends' friends. So mm -hmm. that is like uh, the fundamental concept of Singapore's Tracing app. And we are really fascinated by this concept, and then we thought that we should have it. Yeah. Yeah. Let me go to the next. Yeah. And how we how we start this project? It was mm -hmm. really challenging, uh, to be honest, mm -hmm. to to launch this kind of application in Japan, because like uh, in Japan, uh, as you know, that the, it's quite a gigantic nation. It's mm -hmm. really it's, <laughs> it's already you know uh, um, uh, matured country uh, in terms of all the governance system and the, everything. So it was really hard. Yeah. But the, luckily, uh, I met Hal from Code for Japan. So we both uh, coincidentally started to think about the Kubernetes <laughs> contact tracing app in mm -hmm. Japan. And uh, as he is a professional of civic tech, and I have a contact uh, to the central government, so we decided to work together. And uh, I work under the name of Code for Japan. Mm -hmm. And with the help of mutual friends, we gathered and have decided to work together as one team. And then more, also Mariko joined uh, later on. But a good thing I'm gonna uh, talk in the next slide is that like uh, uh, the, we gathered uh, like so many professionals. So we started to open a Memory I Japan Slack workspace and, and Halu and I uh, easily and soon realized that we need to cooperate, uh, we need to cooperate uh, or involve the corporate volunteers. 
So it cannot be done only with like a regular civic tech project, but we need to involve more like a sophisticated professional, like engineers who can work 24 hours or like in a daily basis. So mm -hmm. the same as like a regular development. Oh, can you go back to the, the previous slide? The oh yeah, sure. Yeah. And we started the first negotiation with Japanese government on March 31st. So it's almost like uh, four months ago, uh, which we've been started uh, with this project. Yeah, please go to the next slide. Yeah, sorry. Oops. Thank you. Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah. And the next thing is like what we, what we tried to make this happen in Japan. So the first we built a team of professionals, not only engineers. I think Halu can explain about uh, this part also as well. But uh, mm -hmm. like, uh, uh, I think regularly, as far as I understand, uh, in the regular civic tech like open source project, uh, uh, mostly uh, only engineers will be involved. Mm -hmm. But this time it was uh, different. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and also like we, we need so many effort to negotiate uh, with Japanese government. So yeah. I, I, ha I, have a, I have a small graphics on the, the, the left bottom. So we actually had a 44 team members. Uh, so that the t team size was quite a big. And mm -hmm. in the first one month, we already had a 40 members. Mm -hmm. So Mariko joined mm -hmm. and other people joined. Yeah. Uh, it's not, Mariko is uh, joined as a PR and also mm -hmm. like a member of branding. And mm -hmm. I uh, joined as a foreign affairs, uh, which is like uh, uh, responsible to negotiate with like a local government and municipalities and the government as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Halu was doing project management. But we yeah. also have a UI, user interface, user experience engineers, mm -hmm. and security and privacy uh, expert and specialist, and also like a branding team. So the branding team come up with like how we should deliver the messages yeah. to you know to make a Japanese citizen uh, comfortable to use this type mm -hmm. of application. Otherwise, yeah. Yeah. they're gonna be you know fear that mm -hmm. they might be you know tracked by government. Mm -hmm. So that's why we felt that the communication was really important. And also, we also yeah. have a doctor here as a planner. Yes. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Maybe it's good to take a question. Uh, how do, did you communicate with the Japanese government? Did you have previous contact with them? Yeah, actually, yes, uh, Code for Japan is uh, had a, a contact with the government uh, uh, members, and also Hikaru had. A, uh, relationship with uh, some of the uh, politicians, right? Yes. So I think it's really important to to have this kind of uh, uh, relationship, ordinary relationship with the uh, inside people, the government. They 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 could connect it, connect us to the uh, right person. So. It, otherwise, uh, it's it's really difficult to jump in uh, uh, this kind of uh, mm. issues inside the government. Hikaru, can, do you have something yeah. to yeah. add? Yeah, we we literally like take an advantage of social capital. So like mm. uh, like we we made we made sure that like uh, what is a missing part to execute this project. And like uh, we 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 tr we really tried to use like uh, social capital. Like, do you know someone who yeah. can help this? And do you know someone <laughs> who is professional in this? And like, uh, we I think we have not, like uh, we our purpose is not to deliver the app itself, but the, our mission is prevent the pandemic in Japan. So yep. in that sense, like we have a, like a clear principles which how to set up in the first place, so that it's quite easier to find uh, like uh, uh, someone to join. Mm -hmm. Because like if we have a clear mission that we can share, even like uh, we work remotely, it's really easier to you know like find someone who can uh, who can like uh, uh, sympathize with that mission and principles. So I think that makes us really easier to find uh, people, even from private sector or public sector. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Yes, and, uh, uh, and 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 then also of course we started to develop uh, the app. So it's not only like uh, uh, private voluntary engineers, but uh, also uh, uh, we uh, get, we get help from like one corporate uh, like company uh, company which is called the Monster Lab, 
So they, uh, they actually allocate the resource of CTO, Chief Technology Officer, uh, for this like a voluntary project without, you know, of course, no compensation. But like uh, they did it and worked together with us uh, for like almost two months for free. Uh, they they knew they knew that it's it's uh, it may have no compensation, but like uh, they think that this is really important uh, for them. So like uh, we have, uh, I think our team has like uh, like so much sense of ownership. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. And also, like Haru started to discuss with Apple and Google, because at the time, of course, not only in Japan but also in other nations, that uh, like some part of like uh, the, the app, uh, Apple and Google like uh, uh, operating system ha has like uh, uh, given no access to the uh, the BLE, uh, so that's like uh, that we need to keep opening that. So that's like uh, we thought that we also need to start discussing with Apple and Google, and like they actually really are helpful and supporting us. Yeah. And the last part is like, uh, what we tried is like, uh, what Mariko uh, doing really hard for this, like public relation and branding. Mm -hmm. In Japan, maybe some of you already know that like uh, most of Japanese citizens are really against government. So anything, <laughs> so far anything <laughs> what government try to do, like uh, Japanese citizens criticizes. So if you check Twitter <laughs> and like uh, everything will be criticized. Yeah. No matter what they do, so like uh, if they yeah. try A, they criticize A. If they try like other other like maybe options like try from B, but like they still criticize us. So like uh, we as a citizen also needs to you know uh, uh, have an open mind to like positively uh, positively communicate, mm -hmm. but like uh, like our sort of like uh, atmosphere uh, uh, in the entire Japan is not ready to to communicate positively. Uh, yeah. what government do against this COVID-19, uh, even its positive actions, because no one knows what's happening behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's why what uh, that's why Mariko was like, you know, doing public relations and branding. Maybe you can briefly explain about this part. Yeah, so as Hikari mentioned, it's very hard to, you know, approaching the top down for, for the Japanese people. So, of course, the Code for Japan is a civic tech um, team. So we try to uh, involve in the people as in grassroots, grassroots uh, activities. And also we tend to uh, approaching the, you know, Japanese BBC, it's called the NHK, because they also curious about this kind of the, you know, grassroots uh, movement. So we will approach for the, you know, a big media and also working as, you know, grassroots using the Twitter or the other, you know, uh, blog, blogging kind of thing. So like not only for the top down just you know working with the government is not working for japanese people so we use you know um the big media and also the grassroots activities thanks All right yeah thank you so mm -hmm. i i th i think like uh, we we, ha we had some sort of like atmosphere that like uh the uh like media also like uh, tried to manipulate citizens like uh by having some some like uh, uh the untruth or not true information and also government like there, there are some like a uh, conspiracy type of like a uh, media coverage that uh, if not if even even if the government is not thinking that way but uh, sometimes like a media is like covering some article because like uh, those sensational articles is like mm -hmm. having attention of mm -hmm. uh, citizens yeah so that's why we thought that i think we we should have uh, two ways of having a yeah. big, uh, huge media and also like social media Mm -hmm. involving like yeah. people one by one yeah yeah thank you um can you go to the next slide yeah sure. this is actually the our uh, memorial japan app ui uh, as we said uh, we couldn't deliver this app unfortunately uh, even though uh, uh i personally think that this is a really great user interface that uh, extremely useful and like uh, easy to see but yeah. like uh, we couldn't deliver it, so it's it's <laughs> gone. It's gone for somewhere on a GitHub. So maybe how do you can explain about the app, app briefly? Yeah, uh, this app is uh, uh, yeah ver very carefully uh, uh, created uh, uh, and thought by the uh, your app UI team, yes. and we created many versions mm -hmm. and tested to the people. And the design uh, concept is uh, uh, the for the everyone uh, can understand, and there is not uh, 
very uh, so not too fancy and yeah. not too sexy that people can understand the, and uh, people and uh, make people uh, uh, feel safe. And and it was uh, the difficult point was the how to uh, explain this uh, technical uh, benefit uh, to mm -hmm. the ordinary people. So mm -hmm. yeah, UI team was uh, spend, uh, spending very, very, really uh, huge uh, amount of time for thinking about this. And also, yeah, technically the and technical part that there are many uh, strategy changing during the app development. It was a difficult uh, another difficult point of this app because the uh, the technology itself uh, is uh, very uh, not mature. The BLE sensors is uh, not perfect for uh, sensing the uh, uh, the 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 uh, measuring the uh, uh, people and people's uh, uh, connection connection and uh, also Google and Apple uh, not uh, have been have not uh, uh, have not published their new yeah. APIs idea. So during the project, there are many uh, other uh, decision was made and. And we had to deal with the uh, very rapidly changing uh, uh, situation. Yeah, but anyway, we published the open uh, the source code to GitHub. I, I can uh, share the uh, URL on the chat. Yeah, so as Har mentioned, there are lots of you know decision you know changing during the you know app development. But we every day, every night, uh, have a meeting <laughs> as a team. So every Literally nine o'clock. Oh, of course, this is you know. Boring. Yeah, every night. No, Literally. no, no salary, <laughs> but uh, we we work together <laughs> and meeting every night because we want to protect um, the people. I mean, the, in, including ourselves using the, this data and the, this application. So um. No people is you know claiming about you know decision changing. We just you know conquering the you know every uh, mm. hurdle. We keep being positive. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But unfortunately, we as uh, unfortunately we couldn't deliver it. Yeah. So like uh, I, I think, but uh, we we keep being positive. But like uh, but uh, if I may say, we fail. Anyway, because like uh, we yep. were working to develop the app and then like, we tried to launch the app. Although our main goal is not only developing the app, but like uh, uh, to, you know, the, to prevent the pandemic and like, save, you know, the like, medical health and healthcare uh, industry workers. Mm. But uh, in that sense, as we uh, in Japan right now have a contract, uh, uh, contact confirmation app. So in that sense, I think we can um i think approach ourselves that's like uh, our first action actually move uh, ministry of health yeah but the ministry of health actually uh, yeah. in may 8th have decided finally have decided to develop the app by themselves uh we've been you know keep saying to government that we need this we need this app but uh, the in the first step like the japanese government the reaction is like uh, this is a toy like this contact tracing app uh, from like a, the, the professional healthcare perspective, this is toy. This is not like a professionally, you know, the, the needed the solutions for 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 this situation. And then like they finally changed, you know, their attitude and like they decided to develop by themselves. But which doesn't necessarily mean that the government there's engineers in inside of government they can build. So actually, we had to give up developing the app. And uh, and the government actually also had a plan to uh, to kind of renew the the Ministry of Health like uh, the, like uh, medical health care system, and they decided to sort of integrate uh, this contact uh, confirmation app, mm -hmm. and they uh, they uh, they asked to the existing uh, like uh, develop, development IT vendor uh, to de uh, to develop the similar application. As they said, yes, they can develop uh, this app. 
So like uh, uh, actually our app uh, is like partially used as like references as mm -hmm. like uh, we've been working so hard to uh, to to make sure about security, privacy, those like, you know, like set up what we needed in like last two months. Mm -hmm. So they all already have, you know, the base and yeah. like, uh, uh, that's what we have done. Mm -hmm. But in terms of the application we built, like, we couldn't deliver it. So like what, what we have uh, failed, like the, the, the part of like what we have failed is that also the government procurement uh, process. So in Japan, uh, it takes so long yeah. For the government procurement system. Mm -hmm. I think <laughs> Haru can explain about this. I, I think I think you have more about the, uh, this like the government procurement system. Well, what do you think about this? How we have failed? Yeah, if if the government uh, did the uh, ordinary uh, procurement process, the up, up development will be delayed uh, later uh, later October, I think. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's difficult to uh, make a, a public uh, procurement and then bidding process in in Japan uh, in, in government, and that was the uh, pro uh, the reason the uh, they choose the uh, existing company uh, already have a, had a, a contr contract with the government. So they uh, the government decided to extend existing uh, uh, contract. And mm -hmm. it, 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 it was uh, more easier than the making the public bidding. That was the one of the reason. Yeah, yeah. I think we definitely need to change this procedure, but uh, mm -hmm. like in this emergency situation, uh, it's pretty hard to, you know, to change everything dramatically. Mm -hmm. And, and I think another reason why we have failed is also like uh, as as like Japanese government is so big and like uh, each uh, government department also have like a uh, the huge like uh, the team size and party size, so the balance of power between government departments and agencies are like uh, it's uh, from from like uh, uh, the private uh, sectors perspective it's quite like kind of easier to see the, the balance of powers between like a minister of health and like a minister of economics and like a, it's pretty hard <laughs> to make them and let them communicate smoothly and with a flat conversation. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think I can, I, we can explain in the next slide, but uh, I think we definitely need to change this situation. This is not about a, like a someone's bat. It, it is not about like a, uh, someone's mistake or someone's failure, but it's about the, some, uh, the failure of ecosystem. Of yeah. communication system mm -hmm. uh, so that's that's uh, that is like a why we also have a fail uh, with this mm -hmm. and yeah, by, well, and by the, the way we have yeah. all, we, we have only five minutes left okay oh, yeah okay. Mm -hmm. okay and also like multiple different open source projects so like, uh, the, there are so many like actually there are like several the uh, open source projects for this like contact confirmation app and uh, every every like uh, contact uh, confirmation app has like a slightly different setup and uh, uh, initially we tried to merge or we tried to work together, but uh, there are some biases and colors that were, there are some private companies try to do. So I think uh, uh, I can't say that there is like zero egos in that, uh, even this is open source project. So mm -hmm. this is also like uh, the, yeah, what yeah. we uh, seriously need to think about open source or civic tech project. Like, uh, isn't, it, yeah. isn't it biased or is it biased? So mm -hmm. like uh, it's definitely unnecessary like egos of private companies for civic tech project. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. So the last slide, uh, the what we have learned and we can do for the future, maybe like uh, the, this is also the summary slide uh, from three of us. So maybe we can summarize uh, from one each. Maybe how do we can mm -hmm. uh, in the end can uh, uh, close this session. But I think that mm -hmm. the power of like uh, leading development vendors, like the, the who de develop this application uh, in Japan, contact confirmation app, like uh, like Hala mentioned, cu current procurement pros procedure needs to be definitely reviewed. They don't have like uh, they don't they don't have uh, like a uh, requirement. Uh, they don't have a communication in requirement risk. They don't have a design in requirement risk. Risk, mm -hmm. but definitely this is mostly important thing for contact confirmation app. Mm -hmm. If government can really care and like uh, spend some more budget for communication design and like also design, maybe right. we may change the situation. 
Mm-mm. And and also, like I said, we need a flat and intensive tech team uh, between public and private partnership. So no bias, no no private companies bias, and no egos. So mm-hmm. like any, anyone in wow. the government sector, in the private sector can kind of like uh, communicate with a flat conversation. It, this is definitely needed, even in a regular situation, not only emergency situation. Yeah. And uh, I think the last part, like uh, also Mariko can explain the necessity of the importance of design and communication in civic yeah. project. Like, mm-hmm. can you explain about like this 361? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, so this 361 is in three is for the you know, 30% for the development, but uh, what are important is in 60% for the PR and one, uh, 10% is for the improvement. So not only for the, this kind of, the, you know, a civic tech is not only for the engineering, but also the engineer and also the you know, PR and branding is very important because, you know, there are lots of, you know, we need to, you know, quickly uh, agiling the you know, improvement to improve the, you know, application. We need to hear, listen to the other people, the users' mm-hmm. voices. So um, from, uh, we learned, you know, three, six, one, six, the and me, a PR part is a six. And uh, I'm happy to join the Code for Japan because before I thought, you know, the Code for Japan is only for the engineering, but uh, now I can join. And this kind of the attitude can influence the other people. So um, our Mamoria in Japan is failed, but I, I think the civic tech and the Code for Japan will be becoming, growing more and more from now. Thanks. This is my last yeah. comment. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So, yeah. Le- uh, let me uh, uh, share some uh, numbers. Uh, before uh, we having the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, uh, Code for Japan's Slack channel, uh, we have uh, around 500 uh, uh, members. Mm-hmm. But right now, we have more than 3,000 uh, 3, uh, members. So many, yeah, six, uh, uh, sorry, 3,000, so six times bigger mm-hmm. than bigger. So really uh, important to keep this momentum because we did, uh, we, we did something, but uh, it's not, we, uh, part of we, uh, partially we failed and that the, the pandemic will uh, continue. So, and we want to uh, this uh, momentum to uh, solve the uh, the problem. Not only uh, making the uh, context tracing, uh, there are many things we can do. And I'd like to uh, to uh, appreciate the people who have uh, started. It's something, uh, not only the COVID-19 uh, contact tracing. So there, as I uh, ex- uh, introduced, uh, that there are many projects uh, in 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 the, each the brigade uh, also. So the, this uh, pandemic was uh, uh, just a very uh, in very good. Uh, starting point to think uh, mm-hmm. what we can do and what we can continue this. So already we connected and uh, uh, Mariko and I started, uh, I joined a new, new project. Yeah. And also uh, we, I and uh, Hikaru uh, started the new dashboard for counting uh, for the statistics of the uh, my number card, uh, just the digital IDs. So this kind of uh, opportunity uh, strongly connected the people. So that's really, uh, that was the uh, very important value of this activity. So uh, let's keep uh, continuing the uh, uh, happy civic hacking. So, Yay. thank you very much. <laughs> Yay. Yay. Thanks. So, yeah, I'd like to pass mic to the rolling. Yeah, um, thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you, Hao, Mariko, and Hikaru. Thank you. It's thank really you. lovely to have you here. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Thank you. Bye. Bye.
It's good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Chris, see you guys.